The whole Liam Kumar Day effect. Not really happening. Nigel couldn't make it. Yeah. I remember him always said he could make don't, it. Don't, yeah. don't dig this hole. <laughs> Phil, credit to the guy, he always manages to do well yeah. what he has, but he is a shocking person on that. <laughs> you guys got a trophy? No. It was, it was pretty bit. No. My life and Rashad Mendes was all good. Hi, you guys. I'm a tag, Jack! I'm a fucking tag! <laughs> Hello and welcome to the LHC Report. I am not joined by her co-host Chris Leach uh, because, uh, n well, not only did he uh, delay the podcast by a day, uh, to be fair, through no fault of his own, he also then forgot he was meant to do it the next day. So, so dear listeners, instead of uh, tweeting into the show about something like we usually ask you to, I would ask you tweet in, atting Chris Leach, hulling your abuse, Go right for it. But I digress. Welcome to the LOC Report. We're going to have a good show for you today. I'm going to emulate my inner Matthew Berry and do a one-man podcast, not quite sort of recording. Uh, don't worry, it won't be too long because I know you don't want to listen to me for more than half an hour already. Uh, so with that, we'll get straight to it. Here's the league news. So we'll start with the transactions, and uh, you'll, prob you'll probably notice there's a, there's a few eyebrow raises, which we'll get to in a bit. Uh, but first off, we got Pat Stan adding Fuzzy Whitaker and dropping Gary Barnage. Fortifiers added Quincy Nunua, who's had a really great start of the season as the slot receiver for the Jets. Thomas Tyrants added Miami Dolphins defense and dropped the Philly. Delphi Eagles defense. The Dream Team added New York Giants to drop Marcus Whedon. Gridiron Gang added Dennis Pitta and dropped Green Bay Packers who could potentially start a tight end after a fairly sluggish start for Antonio Gates. But then they has added Dwayne Washington and dropped Carl Rudolph. He's going to be a good add as we'll get to in a bit. Amir Abdullah had a foot injuries in Sunday's game. Um, so Dwayne Washington looks to step into the early down role for them. Pakistan added Jamison Crowder and dropped Tyler Boyd. Fortifiers added Kenyon Drake and dropped Darren Sproles. Tom's Tarrants added Jacob Tammy and dropped Jason Witten. Uh, Pakistan added Cincinnati Bengals defense and dropped New York Jets defense. And Gridiron Gang added the oldest player in the league, uh, fantasy and otherwise, and a Vinatieri uh, for Matt Prater. Uh, Gridiron Gang also added Cowboys D and dropped James White. Uh, then they dropped Dallas D and added the LA Rams defense. Fudge Flyers dropped Danny Woodhead. Uh, and they also added Matt Asiata and dropped Vincent Jackson. But then they added Matt Ryan and uh, dropped Tara Taylor. Matt Ryan, he's had a couple of hot weeks to start the season. Uh, he's got another plus matchup this week against New Orleans. After that, it gets a bit more dicey, but he'll probably be the starter for Badetonators this week. Uh, Gridiron Gang that had then added Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense to the LA Rams defense. So shuffling defenses around. Uh, since waivers. And the Dream Team, Dream Team finally added Matt Bryant and dropped Stephen Hauschka. So, with that, uh, we will get to the injury news. Uh, so, to this week, as the, the, sh the name of the show may suggest, uh, that there were a lot of injuries. The injury bug is alive, and well, the injury apocalypse has indeed arrived. Uh, so, we'll just get straight to it, uh, give a bit of a hot take with it. So, Gridiron Gang, Doug Martin suffered a hamstring injury. He will miss the next three weeks. Uh, which isn't the worst thing in the world. He's playing the likes of Arizona, Carolina, uh, and another tough defense, LA Rams, I think. Um, so really, really not the worst thing in the world that he's going to be out this week. Apologies, he's played Arizona last week. Uh, then he's got the bye, so effectively out for four weeks, but then he should be coming back week seven. Antonio Gates is a hamstring injury. Uh, he's on the doubtful side of questionable for Sunday's game, I would say. The Dream Team, uh, Julio Jones, is, as per, had a litany of lower body injuries. Uh, he's got a calf bruise, I think was the last word, and he's suffering that ankle injury as well, but as we all expect, Julio probably will play through that. Cash for gold, Kenneth Dixon, uh, he's still coming back from, I think, that knee injury. Um, I don't know if he'll be back. He might be, but I would say no at this point in time. Now, it Here's a big one here, or a big two really, for Foot Flyers. Foot Flyers um, looking to have a bounce back season after a couple of really tough years, and it's going to get even tougher by the looks of things because they've lost Adrian Peterson due to a torn meniscus. He is he is done for the season. There's no two ways about it. He underwent the knife. 
uh, and Danny Woodhead tore his ACL. He is also done for the season. Two of their best running backs uh, gone straight away. Um, Tom's tyrant stayed at uh, Chris Ivory. Um, he obviously had the illness which hospitalized him. He's questionable, I believe, for this weekend's game. He has been a limited participant, so I think he's fine. Tyler Eifert, uh, he's also dealing with an uh, uh, he's dealing with an ankle injury. Sorry, um, for, that stemmed from the off season. Um, he, I believe he's started to practice on a limited basis, but I would not expect to see him back at all this week. But then is Rashad Jennings ha- has a, a thumb injury. Um, he's sporting a cast at the moment. I think uh, I think he's questionable. He'll probably play, um, but I doubt he'll get as much pass catching work as he was. Uh, Sammy Watkins for I saw a report earlier today that he perhaps looks unlikely for the game this weekend he, he's obviously dealing with some foot discomfort that he expects to play through but uh, it seems to have got a bit worse this week so he he quite possibly will miss the Sunday's game keep an eye on that uh, the the bunch uh, well I, I had two comments here actually one of the few teams to get away with no injuries this week so well, well done to uh, Ross um, Ronnie Hillman I was about to say he needs to be dropped because he wasn't on the team but the Minnesota Vikings added him uh, he still has zero fantasy values uh, so I would recommend dropping him and Keenan Allen as well torn ACL he's done for the season uh, Ross mate you can add a few other players you don't need to hold them on your team uh, the Tuck Fards uh, really some might say unlucky some might say had it coming Arian Foster and Thomas Rawls uh, drafted as the two best running backs in the team um, Foster I there is a very long shot to play weekend I would say he's doubtful I do not think he was suit up with a groin injury suffered last week Thomas Rawls however um, he had a lower leg injury some sort of calf bruise or strain or something um, he, he's going to be questionable I think I'm not sure. I don't think he practiced yesterday. He may have practiced on a limited basis today. Um, but keep an eye on him. My gut feeling is he might suit up, but his effectiveness probably will not be there. Brandon Marshall, he's supposedly got. So he suffered a knee injury in last Thursday's game, an MCL injury. Um, that looked a lot worse than it turned out to be but apparently there's some sort of foot injury now involved and he he's been downgraded in practice I think over the last couple of days so keep an eye on him uh, the word is he'll be a game time decision I would ultimately expect Brandon Marshall to suit up he's the kind of player that plays through these things uh, but again just double check Rob Gronkowski tonight's game and the Thursday night game depending when you're listening to this of course um, he has obviously missed the first two games of that hamstring injury I do expect him to return tonight probably still going to be a game time decision obviously down to the third string quarterback in New England as well um, so keep an eye on it but I would anticipate him suiting up for this game Patistan, Jonathan Stewart suffered a hamstring injury last week uh, I would say he is very very doubtful for this week's game and we'll have to see how he comes back from that hamstrings are tricky for the skill position players Ben Assisti, Zach Ertz, uh, dealing with that displaced rib still, uh, did not play last weekend. I would expect him to miss this weekend as well. Amir Abdullah, as I alluded to on the waivers, um, he has been put on IR with what was initially diagnosed as a foot sprain, but sounds a lot more serious. He's already had surgery. He is almost almost likely done for the season Dante Moncrief also has a shoulder injury that will keep him out for four to six weeks ADLZ Corey Coleman he got a broken hand in practice this week he is going to be out I believe four to six weeks as well Iknan Jamal Charles uh, it was said last week that the Chiefs were hoping he would be back for the Sunday's game. That is looking less and less likely by the day. Still trying to come back from that ACL tear last season. Uh, I would expect him to not suit up again. So that is your injuries. And as you can tell, yes, the uh, injury apocalypse has indeed arrived. So with that, we will get straight to the week one recap. And last week, as per, we had some absolutely fantastic games uh we'll start off with last week's marquee matchup which was gridiron gang against tom's tyrants uh always a close one between these two i believe tom's tyrants had the edge four to six uh, in this matchup um 
the the podcast team I think picked both Gridiron Gang last week uh, and they were bang on the money with that one Gridiron Gang won it 102 to 88 uh, largely led by Derek Carr 30 points David Johnson 14 and Eric Decker 18 uh, on Tom's Tyrant side of the ball uh, only one player went over uh, 12 points uh, really one skill player and that was uh, Kevin Benjamin with a great 22 point day uh, but it just wasn't their day they had a lot of tough matchups uh, and I expect them to bounce back big time uh, moving on Tuck Fuds against Forge Flyers um, kind of tipped to be a kind of close one we always expect Tuck Fuds to be able to put up points but they weren't they haven't quite found the rhythm so far this season. Uh, Forge Flyers winning in an impressive 112 to 80 points. Uh, Forge Flyers are largely backed by the highly drafted quarterback Cam Newton. Um, let's not forget they had two injured players on the day, Danny Woodhead and Adrian Peterson. Uh, so they did well to get to 112. Murray, uh, Nelson, Walker, all, and McManus all got about 14 between them. So just a great day. But moved to the other wall. Behind Ben Roethlisberger, who got 25 points, the rest of this team combined for 55. And when you consider that Santos, the kicker, and the Ravens D got 25 of that, so basically six skill positions only got 30 points between them. Made even worse, Brandon Marshall got 10 of those, and Crabtree got nine. Not a lot on the tuck for sort of the ball. Obviously, they did lose Ari Foster and Thomas Rawls, um, which did not help their day, but troubling times for the Tuck Fards. The Detonators against ADRZ. Um, this was tipped to be quite a close game as well. Two well-renowned coaches, obviously the current champ and a former champ. Uh, the Detonators took this one 113-96. to Castle Palmer came up with a big day, getting 30 points. Ryan Matthews got 15. Uh, and the defense, Broncos defense, got 26 points. Behind that, not a lot. Uh, a few struggling days, but you know, I, I, Odell Beckham got less than 10. Mark Ingram hasn't quite found his feet yet. Whether that continues or not, hard to say at this point, but you would expect him to have better games. Meanwhile, on the other side of the ball, a better week for ADRZ, but again, more troubling things. Bortles got some garbage time points, 22 finished with. Demarius Thomas got 11, which in, in reality, with the hip injury he was dealing with, was quite good. Cardinals D uh, and their kicker combined for 34 points. A great day for them, but behind that, Worrying things. Devontae Freeman, he's in a timeshare. Theo Riddick, passing down back. AJ Green had a bad day. You would expect him to do better. And Jordan Reed, as the season goes on, to do better as well. So I think ADRZ can definitely bounce back. Ben SFC is against the bunch now. Um, the bunch had a really, really great first game of the season against uh, Ben Assistis, who was the highest scoring team in week one. And through two weeks now, they are the highest scoring team. Uh, they won this one 1 2 5 to 86. Just another impressive outing. Matt Forte, 29 points. D'Angelo Williams, 19. DeAndre Hopkins and Martellus Bennett, 17. And the Texans, D18 as well. Just raking in the points at the moment. Meanwhile, on the other side of the ball, the bunch, Fitzpatrick got him 23. And he's doing pretty good as a placeholder until they get Tom Brady back. Um, but behind that, not a lot else. Um, I think just an average week. I think uh, the, the bunch are definitely capable of better. It's just a case of putting it on the board. Uh, the Dream Team took on Pakistan, and what was kind of a rivalry in the LSC, I'd say. Uh, Pakistan obviously had the disappointing week one, uh, while well, the Dream Team were the highest scoring loser in week one. Well, that is no longer the case. Uh, they won this one 111 to 74. Uh, a good day for the Dream Team, as I said last week. Uh, I expect this team's points to smooth out as they were very concentrated last week you know Breeze, Anderson Murray, they all got about 16 as did Julio Jones Greg Olsen got 18, Des Bryant got 10 uh, and the flex uh, and defense chipped in about 7 or 8 too so just a good strong week from the Dream Team meanwhile on Pakistan's side of the ball don't read too much into the 74. That, you know, had they started a different quarterback, they would have been right up around 100 points last week. Mike Evans got a 13. Melvin Gordon got an 18. And Graham Gano, the kicker, got 16. There are problems on this team. Um, tight end has been an issue. Alan Robinson hasn't started well, but as has Todd Gurley in the same bar. I expect him to get better. And obviously Stewart got injured last week, so I think better times are ahead for Pakistan. 
Uh, our last game of last week, Cash for Gold against Iknan. Uh, the, the highest winning percentage team in the LOC, taking on uh, last year's runner-up. Um, we all expected Iknan really to win this one, I think. I think Cash for Gold perhaps had, had some upset value, but they were more what we expected from draft day. Iknan take this one 96-63. Just a solid outing from Iknan. Again, Russell Wilson didn't do much for them, uh, but Blunt came out with 18. Will Fuller got 10. Frank Gold got 12. Panthers D got 15. And the other players were fairly solid as well. They should be just fine. Meanwhile, on the other side of the ball, cash for gold. Aaron Rodgers got 19. He's not had a great start of the year. Ezekiel got 12. But no one else finished above 7 points, uh, really, on this. 7.4 points on this team. Um, again, I think there are better weeks ahead. But that, as we all pointed out, there are definitely question marks about this team. And with most rookies, you probably will expect him to struggle. So now taking a look at the standings. Uh... All the divisions mirror each other. Each division has a 2-0 team, two 1-1 teams, and an 0-2 team. In Southampton division, Gridiron Gang leads up the bunch in 2-0. Uh, the bunch and Forge Flies are 1-1 apiece, uh, and ADRZ rounds up the bottom. Current champion, tough start of the year on 2. In the Portsmouth division, Bedenators are 2-0. Tom's Tarrant and Nick Nan are 1-1. In Palestine, there's 0-2. Winchester, Ben are 2-0. Uh, Dream Team and Cash for Gold, 1-1. Or Tuxards are 0-2. To, uh, Winchester division is uh, shaping up to be an interesting one as is the Portsmouth division really uh, so with that we'll get to the power rankings now I'm not going to give a reaction to my own power rankings no one really particularly wants to hear that but what I can do is perhaps talk a bit about my thought process um, but you know but behind uh, why, why I chose uh, who I did so, without further ado, uh, in first place, we still have the, set, the bare necessities were there uh, in position one last week. Dream Team move up um, from position three to two. Uh, Thomas Tarrant's drop from two to three uh, after their uh, middling week. Iknan uh, moving up one spot from five to four. Bledonate is moving up from six to five. Gridiron Gang moving up from seven to six. Uh, while the bunch dropped from four after their precipitous rise, they've now dropped a little bit down to seven after a bit of a disappointing week. Ford Flyers holding at eight would have moved them up, but those injuries have really, really stung them. Um, We'll see how they bounce back. ADLZ jumping up from 12 after a better week despite the loss. They're now at 9. Patterson also moving up 1. He's at a brutal start. Even though he's at 10, I think he can get better. Cash for goal dropped from 9 to 11. Lowest scoring total of the season so far. Um, I think they can do better, but we all expect rookies to struggle a bit. And the Tuck Fards running out the bottom uh, at 12. Moving down from 10. It, it's hard to see what the Tuck Fards are going to do. We always expect them to put up points, um, but they haven't performed in a 12-team league. We saw that last year, so we'll see how they bounce back, especially uh, with their injury problems at running back right now. So some other interesting notes from last week. Uh, ADLZ drops to 3-8 and eight versus Bedernators. Ben is now 2-0 and against the Bunch. Forge Flyers are 5-6 against the Tuck Fouds now. Great Iron Gang now 4-5 and five against uh, Tom's Tyrants. Uh, excuse me, they were 3-5 and five, uh, beforehand. And the Dream Team are now 2-0 and oh versus Pakistan. Coach Sub Senior is now the winningest coach of all time. He notched his 60th all-time win last week. And he's beating uh, Coach uh, Merritt on uh, win percentage. And Coach Gardner, obviously with his loss, no longer the highest winning percentage coach. Hardly surprising. <laughs> Uh, after only one win. Um, so moving on to next week now. There are some very good games uh, for you next week. Uh, and I think none better for a marquee matchup than a Plymouth Bowl. The Tugfords v Padistan. Two 0-2 teams. Really at this point, it's tough to come back from an 0-3 start. We have seen it. The odds are very stacked against you. Um, projections currently have this one going 81 to 71 uh, in Pakistan's favour. Pakistan obviously want to know against the Tarkfards. Tarkfards is going to be looking to level that up. Um, lineup changes in this one uh, as of looking. Uh, Tarkfards still had Aaron Foster and Thomas Rawls in the lineup. Uh, at least one of them is likely to change. Um, and apart from that, they look unchanged. Me a while on Palestine side of the ball. They put Philip Rivers in over um, 
Jimmy's Winston. Uh, Melvin Gordon moves into the starting RB spot. Um, Tevin Coleman comes into the flex uh, for the injured Jonathan Stewart. Um, I'm going to take Patterson in this game. I think if Tark Fods was at full health, I may go with them, and having potentially Gronk back as a massive boost as well. But with their injury issues, I think Patterson probably has the, the talent. Uh, and they've got to put it together eventually. I can't believe they'll keep having the issues they're having. Uh, I think Palestine won it this week. Moving on to the next game, we've got the Bear Necessities taking on Iknan. Um, uh, Bear Necessities obviously 2 0, Iknan 1 1. Uh, looking to keep up in uh, the, 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 the uh, division, I think. Nope, sorry, not in the division, another into division week. Um, Projections currently have this one going 103 uh, to 99 in favor of Iknan. Uh, lineup changes in this one uh, so far. I think Stefan Diggs has come to the lineup for Ben Assistis. Uh, Dante Moncrief uh, has, uh, sorry, Amir Abdullah has come out in the wake of his uh, foot injury. Uh, I believe Brandon Cooks may have come. No, he was already in as well. I think apart from that, unchanged. On Iknan's side of the ball uh, for the second straight week. Completely unchanged. Um, who do I take in this game? Well, I think it's hard to go against the points. Uh, Bear Necessities have been on fire to start the season. They can have been good, uh, not great. Um, I, I think Bear Necessities probably has the talent to see off Iknan this week. Uh, I think it could be a close one, but but I would expect them to win. Um, our next game, Benene is against the Bunch. Um, projections have this one currently going 99 to 78. Um, a lineup changes. Uh, Benene does, I think. Ryan Matthews has come to the side running back spot. Travis Benjamin making a start on wide receiver one after his great week. Um, Rashad Jennings currently in the flex but probably will change. On the other side of the ball, the Bunch, um, as we all expect. They are unchanged as well. Uh, who am I going to take in this one? Well, just looking down the board, a bunch of some pretty horrific matchups. Uh, had a bit of a lull week last week. I'd expect them to be better. Uh, on the other side of the ball, Bidane's by all accounts has some pretty good matchups. Um, he's got some decent players at his disposal as well. I think uh, it'll probably be closer than the projection scoreline has it, but I, I will take the Bidane's in this one to go 3-0. Tom Terrence against ADRZ. Uh, this one's really closely projected. 81 to 80. Projections are really low this season. However, that is without a starting tight end and defense uh, for, for Tom Terrence. So their projection will hop up to probably about 100 and just under 100 maybe. Um, lineup changes in this one. Uh, looking at Tom Terrence. Currently unchanged. They will have Jacob Tammy at starting tight end and Dolphins D, uh, defense. ADRZ side of the ball. Corey Coleman is in the flex as of uh, when I looked to this. However, uh, in the news of his broken hand, he will come out uh, for another player. Otherwise unchanged. Uh, in this one, I think I'm going to take Tom's Tyrant. They had a bit of a down week last week. Ultimately, I think the roster is a bit too talented um, to, to have too many bad weeks. Uh, on the other side of the ball, obviously we've seen ADLZ struggle so far. I could see that continuing. A few injuries have sapped a bit of their upside and their remaining players are a bit hit and miss at the moment, especially with some tough matchups. So uh, I think Tom Sarrance take this one and ADLZ drop to women three. Our next game here, we have Cash for Gold against Forge Flyers. Um, both of these teams looking to go 2-1. Uh, projections currently have this 194, 78 in favor of Cash for Gold. Uh, lineup changes in this one. And nothing for Cash for Gold on Forge Flyers. So the boy Jarrett McKinnon comes in uh, starting for the injured Adrian Peterson. Obviously lost for the year. T.Y. Hilton comes back into the lineup as well for Danny Woodhead who was also lost for the year. Um, who am I taking? in this one I think I'm gonna go with Forge Flyers they have some tough matchups looking down the board but even despite the injuries I think they've got a slightly better team than Cash for Gold who has a couple of tough matchups as well they have a few nice ones um, but, but their players haven't really been performing that great as of yet so I'll take Forge Flyers in that one 
And lastly, uh, the Dream Team take on Gridiron Gang. Uh, Gridiron Gang looking to go 3 0. Projections currently have this one 79 to 91 in favor of the Dream Team. Lineup changes in this one. Uh, Gridiron Gang in the wake of Doug Martin's injury currently starting Christine Michael at running back. Um, Randall Cook comes out of the lineup for. Uh, Marvin Jones, uh, Dennis Pettis starting at tight end, and the Buccaneers defense, and Adam Vinatieri uh, in as well. On the Dream Team side of the ball, as of looking, uh, do, 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 I think Jordan Matthews comes back into the lineup for Charles Sims, perhaps, last week. Uh, other than that, I, th I think they won you kick from waivers, so, which I'd have on my screen, apologies. Uh, but uh, who, who am I going to take in this one? Who am I going to? Of course. Of course. I'm going to take my team. Uh, no, I'm going to be realistic this week. Um, I've got some tough matchups this week. Um, the, uh, Viv has some very, very juicy matchups. Some not so juicy matchups as well. Um, but I think he's got a very talented roster. Uh, you know, what we've seen from Gridiron Gang, they're, they're a consistent team. They're probably going to get to a certain level each week. Uh, but I think this is one of those weeks where that's not going to be quite enough. And the Dream Team uh, will probably pip them with a slightly higher score. So that is all of the matchups this week, I believe. Just check I haven't missed anyone. Yep, there we go. Um, so... With that, I will give you a few stats, and then we'll get to our coach call. So, Gridiron Gang, uh, two and four against the Dream Team at the moment. So, looking to make that a bit closer. Eddie Z four and five against Tom's Tyrants, pretty close there. Uh, but Ennis against the bunch, one and one, split a piece. Tuck Fards, as I said, at own one against Pakistan and Ben Assistis, a three and six against Ignan. So, we could we could have an upset on our hands here. Um, some of the news: Phil, Dave, and Tom could all. Well, Phil could regain and Dave and Tom, Dave could hold winning his coach and Tom could become winning his coach. All depending on what happens uh, next week, I believe. Uh, so we'll just have to spot that. Tom can also get a 60th win of all time next week. Coach Nathwani also going for his 40th all time win. Ross still on for his 20th all time and regular season win. I'm looking for my 50th regular season win after getting my 50th all time year in week one. Uh, all time win in week one, sorry, and Ben's. A Ben loss would mean a 40th career loss. Now we'll get to the coach call. And on the coach call this week, we have none other than Edot Rocker, Coach Barnes of Tom's Tyrants. How's it going, Coach Barnes? Hello, yeah, all good, thanks. Yourself? Yeah, yeah, very good, thank you. Flying solo on the podcast, of course, but other than that, doing just fine. Fine, we had another good week of OC last week, but I want to go back to week one for you real quick. Uh, coming off uh, what seemed to be another strong draft, you had a great week one, 117 to 98 against Iknan. Tell me about that game. Yeah, I was pretty, I was pretty happy on the whole. I, um, I owe a lot to Mr. Luck, but <laughs> that's what he was drafted for. So, and um, I'm kind of hoping that the rest of my team can share some of the touchdowns and we'll be there yeah luck like with uh, 43 points in week, week one really putting uh, your team on his back so to speak or on his beard perhaps um, <laughs> but in week two he 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 struggled mightily uh, and you lost in week two to my team 102 to 88 uh, what do you make of Luck's week two performance to be honest it wasn't unexpected I left him in there because that was what he, I drafted him to play every week I left him in there for that reason I wanted to see what he could do. He didn't put up an absolute stinker, but it wasn't good. And it certainly wasn't enough. No, certainly not. But like you say, um, wouldn't be surprised if that was his worst week of the season. Uh, but really, I mean, the, the, the problem stemmed more further than Andrew Luck last week. Um, you, you did get to 88 points, which is a decent total, with the quarterback only getting 12. But other than Benjamin getting 22, there wasn't a great deal else there. Uh, what did you think about the rest of your team last week? Yeah, um, my running backs are less good than I was expecting them to be. They're, um, they're just struggling in the offences they, they're in, unfortunately. Miller's getting a ton of touches until he gets in the end zone, uh, the red zone, sorry, and then he's getting no touches. <laughs> and which is better than Lacey, who's just getting no touches at all. Pretty much. So, <laughs> yeah, hopefully they, um, I mean, both of those offenses seem to run better with their running backs, if I'm honest, so hopefully yeah. they, uh, they, the real-life coaches sort that one out and start winning me 
<laughs> Definitely. I mean, Packers' offense so far hasn't been great all around. Um, Houston, Miller's had a bit of a slow start. I think he's, while you say he's getting a lot of the touches I read early, he's had about 3.6 yards of carry, but I agree you'd expect that to improve and start to get some touchdowns at some point. Uh, looking ahead to next week, uh, now your team uh, wasn't completely out of the woods with the injury apocalypse that happened last week, um, but for the most part you did okay. Uh, Deshaun Jackson has some sort of, um, I think it's a leg injury, some sort of, what, what do you make of that? Do you think he's going to play? Knee ankle is what I'm saying. I'm, I'm kind of, I am following that one alone. I'm not, I'm not sure. If he, if he goes, then he's a starter for me, but it's one to monitor. I'm kind of hoping he suits up, but if not, I think I'm going to slot um, Williams in for San Diego. Mm-hmm. He's got a bit of a cake match up against the Colts. Sure does, and he had a decent last week as well. Uh, currently, you're not starting a tight end or defense. It's a bold strategy. Uh, oh, you know me, mate. I'm all about bold. Yeah, okay. But you will be starting the Dolphins defense against Cleveland, which is another cake matchup, and Jacob Tammy. Uh, what do you make of your game against ADRZ this week? Uh, well, looking forward to it. Cautiously optimistic, as always. Got to be an optimist in fantasy, otherwise that's, that's pretty <laughs> hard luck on you. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Like you said, I've got the Dolphins going in and Jacob Tanny, who I've liked so far this season. And it's always nice to have a Falcons player in there, even if it's not a Julio. <laughs> <laughs> certainly, certainly. Uh, do you, are you are you better worried about ADRZ maybe being 0-2? Desperation, you know, maybe draws out the best in him. What do you think? Mm, it could do. There's uh, there's bits and bobs I like in his roster this week. Riddick's going to get a lot of an uptick with the Abdullah injury, and um, I think it's only a matter of time till Freeman and Bortles get going a bit as well. But then also having said that, you've got Green going against the um, going against the Denver secondary and Thomas against Cincinnati, which is not as nice as it could be so I don't know we'll see how it goes he's got he's got highs and lows in there he certainly does uh, well that about wraps up for the coach call so thanks for joining uh, the show and best of luck this week and before you leave us give us a quick plug for your article a quick plug for my article well I mean it's awesome every week read it <laughs> great plug thanks for joining us uh, good yeah. luck this weekend <laughs> see you later Cheers, bye. Bye. Uh, that was the coach call with Tom Barnes. Uh, uh, as he said at the end there, his article will be coming out not long after the podcast, but by the time most of you probably listening to this, probably will already be out, so go check that out. E.Lockyer. Lockyer. Um, so that's it for the show. Uh, apologies, it's probably not the most enthralling one, me flying solo, but as I said at the top of the show, hello, you're abusive, Chris, and have the best fantasy week ever, guys. See you later.